Inside us is a framework of bones which gives shape and support to our body, which we call our skeleton. And in all these goods, there is a type of skeleton which we call denatured proteins, which give structural support too. This structural support mainly comes from the protein gluten, which is found in wheat flour. Flour is made by grinding and crushing grains of wheat. Flour can be made from many different cereals, but in the UK, wheat flour is the most common. Some old flour mills, like this one, use water power to crush grains of wheat to make the flour. The process you can see is making whole wheat flour, which is also called wholemeal flour. Wholemeal flour is made into white flour by rolling and sieving out the bran and wheat germ, which leaves the inside of the wheat grain called the endosperm. Wheat flour, grown in the UK, is not very high in gluten, so is sometimes blended with harder wheats from other countries. Okay, we're going to make great globs of gluten here. We're going to make a soft elastic dough out of three different types of flour. We're going to use a plain flour, a strong bread flour, and a whole wheat flour. We're going to use 50 grams of each. Add enough water to form a soft dough ball and knead for five minutes until the dough becomes smooth and elastic. So this can be done on a work surface or if you prefer in a bowl. Knead all of the flours for the same amount of time. Some flours will form better balls than others. The whole wheat flour may require a little bit extra water in it as the bran inside it will soak up a little more of that water. Inside all these wheat flours there are two proteins in the wheat kernel called gliadine and glutenin. When we carry on kneading, those two proteins combine together to form gluten. So by the end of the kneading, you should end up with a nice clean board and nice clean hands. So we've finished all three of the balls and we're now going to let them rest and relax for 5-10 minutes. Now to find out which of our great globules of gluten has got the most gluten in it. To do this, we're going to wash away the starchy carbohydrate and leave behind the gluten that we formed earlier in kneading. To wash away the starch, wrap each ball in a muslin cloth and rinse under the tap for about 20 minutes. From the plain flour, we have 15 grams of gluten from 50 grams of flour. From the strong bread flour, we have 29 grams of gluten from the 50 grams of flour. From the whole wheat flour, we have 15 grams of gluten from 50 grams of flour. Here you can see the bran and wheat germ. These are part of the wholemeal flour, but do not form part of the gluten structure. You can see from these examples that strong plain flour has the most gluten, so this flour will make the best bread. So with our concentrated balls of gluten, we can also have a quick look at the properties. We can see that they are plastic, which means that they can change their shape, like this wonderful ball of putty. And they're elastic, which means that when we stretch them like this balloon, they can stretch and return to their original shape. These plastic and elastic qualities of wheat dough allow it to trap gas, such as carbon dioxide made by yeast, and expand, which helps bread and other baked goods rise to become light and fluffy. So having seen the properties of all three gluten globules, we're now going to see what happens if we actually bake them in the oven. After baking the gluten globules, you can see how the different types of flour and levels of gluten result in different loaves of bread. The plain flour does not contain enough gluten for successful bread making. You can see that the gluten ball extracted from the flour is small compared to the strong plain flour. The loaf made from this flour does not have as much volume and the loaf structure is softer and weaker. The strong plain flour has more gluten. It produces a loaf that has a firmer structure and is more crusty. 
The bread holds together better when it is sliced and has a firmer, chewier texture, which is what we want in a successful bread. The wholemeal flour has less gluten than the strong plain flour. The gluten present also has the bran and wheat germ mixed in with it, which also weakens its structure. The loaf it makes will have less volume than the strong plain flour. But remember, for healthy eating, we all try to eat more whole grains and wholemeal bread provides this. So the best flour for bread making was the strong plain flour. Most bread sold in the UK is made from wheat flour. Gluten is the protein in flour which makes the dough stretchy and gives the bread its texture. Wheat flour grown in the UK is not very high in gluten, so is sometimes blended with harder wheats from other countries. Bread dough must be kneaded for at least five minutes to develop the gluten to make the dough stretchy. The gluten in flour can be extracted by washing away the starch. Gluten balls are stretchy like bubble gum. They are balls of protein. The higher gluten flours which are also known as bread flours, give the bread a good crust and a stronger, less crumbly texture. The best flours for bread making are strong flours, high in gluten.